Joe's going to be the teacher this morning, not me. You don't get to see my friendly face. You get to see that, one. but make sure you don't get blinded by the top of his head. The reason I am up here, I want to give people updates on my aunt <coughs> and on my mother and father-in-law. My aunt has went to Cleveland Clinic yesterday. They're hoping they can get her heart back in rhythm and that her heart will start functioning without having to put a pacemaker. And we need to keep them in our prayers. They were members of the church and they fell away, what do you say, 20, 25 years ago? Or more. Or more. And I know we discussed last week about <coughs> people that we want to help and encourage. The two that I put were my aunt and my uncle. And I'm hoping that this is a wake-up call as long as she, God lets her make it through this to get them back into the church where they need to be. What's your husband's name? Danny. Yeah. That would be Shirley and Danny Rigginbaugh. And on an update on my mother and father-in-law, mother-in-law was doing better. She's doing much better than what she has been. The father-in-law, Bob, he is... Not getting any better. I think he's going downhill extremely quick. Carol don't see that because I don't think she wants to admit that. And we need to keep Carol in our prayers. This is very, very hard on her right now. She puts on a good front, but nobody sees when she's at home when she's crying. I don't want to do that, say it now because she'll be here next week. Because I know there's a lot of love in this congregation. And I respect that and I love that about the Dover Church. But Brother Joe will be our teacher. And if he wouldn't mind, I'd like to open us in a word of prayer. <coughs> Holy Father, we thank you so much for the day that you have given us, especially this day, that we can come together in thy precious faith and to worship you collectively. We thank you for the week that we've had, whether it was good or bad, we know that uh, those things help strengthen us. We ask, Father, this morning that you, you put some loved ones in your hands. <coughs> And hold them and comfort them. For Danny and Shirley Riggenbaugh, we ask that you be patient with them and give them longer and help them to realize the love that you have for them and the grace that is offered through your son. We also pray, Father, for Carol's mom and dad. Hold them in your hands and heal them. Help Carol, too, as she deals with this very stressful situation. Comfort her and allow us to comfort her as well. We thank you for the church, for all the things that the church represents, and for the founder, your son, our Lord and Savior. And it's his name we pray. Amen. How can so much noise come out of something so little? <laughs> Look at it. Wait, where is there a scowl? Yeah, there's a little little scowl on her face. Uh huh. I don't have any more M and M, sweetie. You ate them all. Yeah, you cheated. Well, I helped. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good morning. It is good to see all of your smiling and 
happy and talkative faces. Let's see how many we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I need more copies. Oh, uh, wait a minute. There's make me about four more. They're duplex. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of enthusiasm this morning, especially from this second table. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and our guest that's here, it was it was nice to have. I was telling tell it earlier when I when I came in the bedroom after showering, the, the little cassette player was on and the room was dark. And I, I looked and I seen this thing playing. I'm going, uh, Pam is still in bed. I'm going, what's going on here? Is this? Do we have a poltergeist? Or what? You know? <laughs> And she goes, oh, you can turn the light on if you'd like. <laughs> so, yeah, she did. So, <laughs> Sorry. Alice, you're off to a great <laughs> stop today. <laughs> I, I, thought, I, I thought it was a home. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, the, the reason um, that I talked with Jake earlier in the week, and last week during our discussion, we presented a couple of terms that uh, I think there was some confusion about it. And as we prepare to go out and to talk to others about Christ, we have to be aware of those people that we're talking to and how they react. And uh, we have taken uh, some, some classes here on Wednesday night. Well, one, one in particular was called uh, Tactics by Greg Cool. And uh, it helped kind of set the stage. And so this morning, what I'd like to do is go over a couple of things. And I do have a handout. And uh, did you copy them already? My, assist, my assistant took care of it. Oh, OK. And uh, so I'll give you a handout here at the appropriate time that you can take home and, and keep it as a reference. But um, a couple of the terms that we're going to look at is assertiveness and aggressiveness. And it's funny because I had to take this in college and then I had to take it again uh, as a nurse manager. And so and it's, you know, it's coming full circle. But as we deal with people, we have to be aware of what's going on with them. So, oh, here oh I see your assistant, there he is. Okay, I'll just pick him up here, David. So I can find him. Yeah, I guess I gotta take it back. Yeah, think of that. The assistant pool was not as good as the other. <laughs> <laughs> so, I took care of his wife for years. All right. Are we going to Thank work or not? Sure. There we go. I have a hunch we're going to have some issues this morning. Why not? Yeah, why not? Either that or the battery's gone. So, there we go. I'll use this. All right, so when you look at this picture, thank you. When you look at this picture, what do you see? What are some of the, some of the things that you see in this picture? Two people having a conversation. Okay. Um, pardon me? He looks to be defensive. Do you think? Sure enough, a little bit. I grabbed his eyes for saying something. All right. He's being he is being actually a surgeon at this point. Okay. All right. What's in front of him? Somebody else. And what else? A book. There's a book. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So it looks like they're discussing something, whether it's faith or or something else. But I I don't. Do you think he looks? <clears throat> I don't think he looks aggressive. I think he looks it, he looks focused. You, you missed a spot of, on his chin when you shaved. Yeah. <laughs> I have that problem too. It's called dirt. Just saying. <laughs> I'll cut it off or leave it on. Um, if, if you look a little closer at his hands, what is his hands telling you? He's married. Okay, that's good. He's married. But he, uh, he likes he likes. Is he Italian? 
<laughs> talking with his hands. He's talking with his hands. Okay. He went to what's the matter you got? Okay. But it, it looks like they're having a very focused conversation. What about the other guy? All we see is his back. But what can that tell us? He's engaged. Okay, he's engaged. Does he look defensive? No, because you no. can't tell. No, you, you really can't tell. But he's sitting up straight. His hands are probably across the table, maybe holding a cup or something. But he, he they just look engaged and focused. Okay, so. Uh -huh. Wrong way. I know. Why did it do that? You know what that's like, Mike? I do. <laughs> I got that. Okay. He's confused. There we go. So we're going to look at assertive and aggressive behavior. So in this lesson, you're going to learn three things. The meaning of being assertive, the difference between being assertive and being aggressive, and to practice assertive skills. Okay. In other words, we're talking about sharing the gospel, we're looking at all kinds of tactics and everything about sharing the gospel, and we're laying the groundwork, but you know what? It doesn't work unless you start doing it. And, and finding out where you are, how you are, what you are, and your mistakes. So, what does God's word tell us about our speech? And we're gonna look at a couple of things here. And we're gonna let God's word tell us how we go about speaking to people. So the first one is Philippians 2, 3, and 4, and this is from the ESV. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So we see a couple of things here. Uh, nothing about selfish ambition or conceit. Uh, in humility and count others better than yourselves. Okay, or more significant than yourself. The next one is Romans 12, 3, For through the grace given to me, I say everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. And if you look at this attribute, this is Christ. This is what Christ is. He lowered himself. And he taught in that way. He was He was humble. He was focused. So, here's the next one. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And one of the things that we, that we learned in the tactics course, one of the first things was develop the art of listening. Not hearing, but listening and seeing. And then the last one, <clears throat> Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, <clears throat> Excuse me. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And in the handout that I'll be giving you, these are there. So let's keep these things in mind as we discuss our topic today. So assertiveness, what is it? Let's look at it. The definition of assertiveness is... <laughs> question mark. If I move the thing, it, it's bold and definite in character. Now that doesn't mean, because you're bold, that could mean a couple things. What would bold mean to you? You're sure of what you're saying? Yeah, you're assured. Uh, in Hebrews 4, it says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Mean it. Uh -huh. So we can go boldly to the Creator. But you also have to remember, Joe, that when you go boldly to somebody, you also have to go respectfully and there you go. Mm -hmm. But you also can be assertive, but you can be tactfully assertive as well. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And that's something that we all need to realize. Yeah, and that's what we're going to be talking about here. So here, behavior that enables a person to act in their own best interest. That kind of sounds selfish, but it's not. Let's go with the number two. Allows a person to stand up for themselves without undue anxiety. All right? You know, I, uh, an example would, would be, what you're saying makes me very uncomfortable. Um, and 
I, I, I would prefer that you not use that kind of language. And so that's being assertive. That's standing up for yourself. And it's not degrading the other person because where's it focused? It's not focused on them, it's focused on, on you, all right? Uh, it allows for the expression of honest feelings comfortably. Now they do have a thing called passive assertiveness. And we're not gonna include that, but it's, it's in this genre. <coughs> and the last one, it says, permits exercising one's own rights without denying the rights of the other. All right. Any any questions on this? In other words, when you're talking to somebody, there's some things that you don't do while you're, while you're talking with them, especially when it comes to, to, to the gospel. All right. <clears throat> Assertiveness allows for the expression of one's feelings, beliefs, opinions, and needs in a direct and honest manner. Let's say somebody's doing something and it, it, it's irritating. And you can do one of two things. You can either lash out or step back, take a breath, think, and then engage your brain. Uh, this shows confidence and self-assurance. Assertive behavior reflects a high regard for your own personal rights as well as the rights of others. In other words, you are looking, you have your own opinions, etc. But so does that other person, and you respect those rights. You may not agree with them, but you do respect them. This is a positive sense of respect for self and others. So we have to keep that in mind, according to what we looked at in the scriptures so far. So being assertive, there's, there's four steps here. And this first one deals with assesses requests. In other words, let's say uh, <clears throat> maybe you're studying with somebody or maybe your boss comes up and asks you something or somebody from church asks you to do a task, you assess the request. Now, a passive assertive person would say, well, I, you know, I'm really, I'm really busy and I can't, but oh, uh, well, oh, okay. So a passive assertive person won't say no. And I think some of us have found ourselves in that predicament. We, we want to please people, but it's at our own expense. So, but this one, you assess the request and you react and you, you talk about it, whether you can or you can't, all right? The next one is to ask questions. Again, very important, asking questions like, what do you mean by that? How did you come to that conclusion? Is there another, is there another solution to this situation? And you ask questions. You rub your head, you hold your cigar, and you do the Columbo thing, all right? <clears throat> no apologies or excuses. You don't apologize for what you're expressing. You're not being offensive to the other, and that's the idea. You don't be offensive to that person. And you know, sometimes this takes a very conscious effort, especially in the midst of a Bible study where maybe the, the person that you're studying with says something that might be on an aggressive note. And you can feel your blood pressure rise and you can feel the adrenaline start to pump and you get that fight or flight and you're not running away. But you have to step back and there's some other things you can do. And the last one is look to look to the future and suggest alternatives. Okay, so and while you're dealing with this, you're thinking, but you're also listening. Questions. All right, aggressive. Definition: a disposition to dominate often in disregard of others' rights and a determined and energetic pursuit of one's ends. In other words, I'm going to win. Uh, this is often unplanned. In other words, it's accidental. It's reactionary, impulsive, and fueled by intense emotion as opposed to desire to achieve a goal. Just like I made the example, the person says something 
and maybe they get a little aggressive, your adrenaline starts pumping, and now you're gonna be reactionary, the emotions are gonna take over, and you're gonna lose, okay? So there's three forms. Physical, this one we don't really see. This could be a childhood thing. Hitting, biting, or destroying property. I'm gonna get in my way. I'm gonna toilet paper your house, all right? Uh, mental would be ignoring and excluding others purposely, acting arrogant. <clears throat> Have you ever had that when you was a kid? Your friend ignored you on purpose? Or you're wanting to play a game, and you know how they pick sides? Uh -huh. And you're the last one? They're not really ignoring you, but if you're the last one, you're not that good of a person. I will take them. Okay? Um, and then... <laughs> Body language is very important, as well as eye contact. In the picture that we looked at at the beginning of the lesson, was there eye contact? Yeah, he was focused. He was focused. You don't know what the other guy was doing, but you looked at his head, you could tell they, they, were, they were doing that, okay? Uh, with aggressive behavior, it could be eye contact, or it could be looking down or somewhere else. Um, or it could be really intense with a scowl. Verbal. Now this is the one you see. Bullying, demanding, shouting, being manipulative and hostile. So of all the ones that you that you think are are the most important, which ones would you say? Of the uh, of the forms. You mean trying to study with someone or what? Any, any interaction what you're having whatsoever, especially when you're studying the gospel. So normally when you're approaching someone with the gospel, you're not hitting them, biting them, or destroying their property because they're being, <laughs> they're being resistant to the word. You, okay. just, you know what? I'm fine. I'm going to break your glass. You can just deal with it. Suck it up. Okay, so which one? Are you going you gonna to do the physical? No. I'm going to beat them over the head with a two-by-four <clears throat> while there's a big plank in my eye? Leave my plank alone. Yes, and uh, I think language is a very curious thing. Yeah. And uh -huh. it depends uh, where you were born, up your upbringing, and, and how you present what you were trying to say. Mm -hmm. And that all encompasses what you're going to say. It did. Now, if you're studying with somebody, and they're standing here like this, and you're studying with somebody, that's defensive. You're closed. Okay? Uh, if, if somebody's talking to you and you're just. Somebody's talking to you and you're doing this. You know, what you had, what they had to say is not important to you. It's not important. No. Uh, if somebody is doing this, that's body language. Is that. Aggressive or assertive? Aggressive. Yeah, you're pointing. Now, the guy had his hands like this. This is an open stance. Jake? That's where I'm going to have to say it can be both. Aggressive or assertive. And it also depends on the body language that you're using. Because that's where, what I was trying to get understood last week is that's where the tactfulness comes in. That's where, like if I'm talking to Larry, and I'm pointing at Larry saying, like that. That's aggressive. Yeah. But now if I talk to Larry like this. Yeah, you got open that's hands. Just a, mm -hmm. That's just stating my facts of how I feel about something. That's asserting my, my attitude, mm -hmm. how I feel about something, mm -hmm. how I understand about something. Mm -hmm. But when you actually are showing pure aggression or hatred. Yeah, the, your body's going to show it. Being just being an animal, that's the aggressive part. That's correct. But the assertive part is getting what I want said out, making the point. Yeah, without offending the other person. Right, you're yeah. doing it so the, tactfully. You're doing the Italian thing, okay? You're right. talking with your hands. All right. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> so two of the two of the important ones are eye contact and body language, but also verbally because it also depends on 
tone on the tone of voice. Why are you shouting at me? But you're always shouting is not always aggressive. Man. Somebody may be hard of hearing you or forget their hearing aid. <laughs> well, you got to take that. In, you got to take that into consideration. My mother-in-law, rest her soul. Today would be her birthday. My mother-in-law, dad was hard. Dad is still hard of hearing, and people would talk to dad. Do you hear me? Mom would say, he's hard of hearing. He's not stupid. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. So, all right. Now. Right. You hand these out. Just going to throw them and see how they land. Yeah. Make airplanes out of them. All right. So. An assertive person is self-assured and confident about one's own opinions. All right. An aggressive person overestimates one's opinions and begins is harsh to others by arguing. Now we know in, in doing a Bible study or even in day-to-day in, in -day whatever, as Christians, we are to be as wise as serpents and gentle as doves. And we're to be humble. So arguing no, it's not going to work. You know, you know how arguing works. Uh, an assertive person respects others as well, but an aggressive person doesn't. An assertive person is confident enough to share their opinions with others. Well, you know, I don't see it that way. What, what, uh, what led you to that conclusion? Now you notice I just used a pointed, but it was it was an open hand. Uh, so you're you're discussing it, okay? Isaiah says, "Come, let us reason together." Uh, a aggressive person is harsh and rude to the opinions of others. In other words, they don't. I don't care what you say. They have a confident, assured attitude about themselves and being assertive, whereas an aggressive person is prideful uh, about themselves and they disregard others. And most important. There's always a positive outcome with assertion, whereas with aggressiveness there is. Um, an assertive person expresses my needs are, are just as important as everyone else's. But everyone else's is included in that. In other words, I'm not number one here. We're together on this. That's what that means. <coughs> Only my needs matter. Easy flow of talking and listening. Those are two key points. Listening, talking. Maybe it should have said easy flow of listening and talking. Because listening is very important. Talking over others. And we're going to see an example of that as time, if we have time. I'm okay and you're okay. I'm okay, you're not. How about this one? I tend to compromise. What do you think about that one? That's correct. Yeah. Now, if you're talking about matters of doctrine, there is no compromise. There is no compromise. But at the same time, what you're trying to do is put a put a stone in their shoe. Let them come to that conclusion. Your job is to ask questions. What's that part? Don't be rude. No. Uh, they say I tend to take over. Uh, I stand up for myself. That's good. That's that's being self-assured and confident. I tend to bully others. I find it easy to express my true thoughts. When expressing myself, I can shout or become aggressive. <coughs> and then I try to make things fair. I look after myself. So there's a lot of I in this aggressive thing. Without any 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 thought or care for the other person. Okay, how to deal with aggressive people. Now, um, in, your, in your handout, you actually have a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. So dealing with an aggressive, with aggressive people, the, first, the very first thing is what? Remain calm. Remain calm, yeah. 
take a breath, listen, uh, say a short prayer if need be, and be confident. James 1.19, remember? Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. The absolute most, most important thing to do when dealing with someone who is being aggressive to you is to be calm and grounded. Take a breath. Think about it. Silence is golden. It allows you to think. And the principle that's found in James 1.19 is very good. What's the next one? Empathize. Empathize. With the other person. What what is what is empathy? What's the difference between empathy and sympathy? Empathy, you've been there. Sympathy is you feel bad for someone. Or you you care for them. Okay. You care for them. All empathy right. is putting yourself in their shoes. Okay. In other words, okay, now we have a widow's ministry here. And you're not a widow. And you're talking to to the person, but you've never experienced that loss. How can you empathize with that individual? You don't understand everything that they're going through. Now, you can be there. Um, the best thing to do is just be there. Just listen. Lend an ear. Let them talk. Ask questions if need be. Because what you're trying to do there is allow them the ability to search their own feelings. Whether they're good feelings or bad feelings, but those things will come out and help. Um, give the undivided attention to the conversation. Let the speaker actually speak. Summarize your understanding to the speaker. In other words, you're going to restate what they're saying so that they also understand that you understand. And then ask insightful and relevant questions. If need be, allow them to rant. Has anybody unloaded on you? Uh, unloaded on you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 And what do you do? What's your what's your reaction? Listen. <laughs> Let them rant. Let them rant. Is it do you think it's it's to you? No, no, it's it's not to you. Um, do you, do you tend, depending on how they're raining, do you get defensive sometimes, or is it uncomfortable when they're when they're on a rant? Not yet. <coughs> sometimes. Depends on who's ranting. It depends on who's ranting. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I'm sorry, but you know, it's I, I deal with a lot of. Younger workers now yeah. who don't understand things, and so it's hard sometimes to discuss with them uh, what things, how things really should happen. And uh, for example, I had a kid that, I mean, I, I don't, I call him a kid because I think he's only 19, and he expected to come into the factory and be in charge of everything. Couldn't find his place at all in any of the departments, and he came in, he came into the lab where I was at, and he. He was yelling and screaming and hooting and hollering about everybody and everything. And his hand went like this. And I said, I'm going to hold it to you right there because if you throw that, you're fired. So you need to go sit over there and sit down. And, you know, he was like, well, I just don't understand. I said, of course you don't understand. You've been here for that long. You know, it takes years. You may not agree with it and you may have a great idea, but you try to bring it to the right people. Yeah. Not in here, you know, and it's like I told him, I said, you better watch that because you're not going to last long. No. And he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> he, he threw it at somebody else, and he would have been he'd have been good to go in the service. He threw it at somebody else, and they knocked him on his can, so <laughs> out the parking lot. So that was it. They both got fired. But, you know. <laughs> All right. The next step is to express your concerns. Case okay. okay, You express your concerns. All right. Tell them what you're thinking. And but you don't do it, you know. Yeah. You watch your body language. You do it tactfully. Tactfully. Be honest with yourself. In other words, you're self-aware. You know how you feel. That other person may not know how they feel, and they definitely don't know how you feel. But if you're honest and you express that, 
they'll know. And the most important is to talk. Allow them to talk, and this shows compassion. In other words, being self-aware. Now, in my mind, you can aggressively hear this group. You can have discussions. That can be a service. Yeah. Or you can have arguments. Yes. Yeah. And the argument, once you know you're getting into an argument, it's time to shift gears. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna see that here in just a second. But I have this little slide here that says, by empathizing with another, we allow ourselves to be more compassionate in communication with them. We're thinking, we're listening, we're thinking, and then we talk. All right? So very careful. Now, let's see here. All right. What was that that just went by there? Steamroller. The steamroller. All right. So wait a minute. Let me see if I have it. Okay. Um, I have a video clip. I have two. One, it's a little uncomfortable. The other one, you can see what happens. Let's see. Absolutely, and the last thing I want to do is, you know, take up more of your time than is necessary. Um, I mean, is there any way, for instance, you know, I, I could be included in the email loop after the meetings? Well, I don't see why not. Okay. And who's the best person to talk to about that? Um, I'll see Beth about that. All right, so you're happy if, if Beth includes me in the, in the, the loop? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously it's had an impact because we've had people coming in over the weekend um, working on it, on, on, on unnecessary information, so... Um, well, it's not exactly unnecessary information. It all feeds into the three remaining scenarios, so it's not wasted time. Sure, I, I, I'm sure that's true. Um, at the same time, it's probably a bit of a waste of money because obviously we fought out for overtime and stuff. Well, you know, hopefully you'll keep up more in the future. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's look forward to that. So, is there anything else I can do for you? Um, uh, actually, have you got the diary there? Um, I do, yes. Uh, Tuesday the 23rd, 
uh, 10 o'clock meeting in here, you plus the team, um, I'd like to see all the PowerPoint for the presentation on Friday to the board. Sure, um, presumably you're happy that I can cancel my meeting soon, I've got one at 10 o'clock. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. let her know I said so. Okay, that's no problem. Okay, yes. have to be excited. Okay. Please. All right, so the first scenario um, <clears throat> was pretty much self explanatory. Who was the aggressor? In the first video. In the first video, yes. He was. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, both of them. They both. They both were the, were the aggressor. And did you see talking over? Yeah. What was your eye contact like? Not. No. It was, who seemed to be more aggressive? She did. Yeah. In the second video. <laughs> in the second video. She was aggressive. Well, definitely he was more aggressive. aggressive. Yeah. She was. Was that Mike? I think she was definitely more aggressive. This yeah. I think she was. I think she was. Mm -hmm. But he was able to do something. Yeah, right. he, 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 he heard it and just said, okay, this isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Okay, so, he found a way around. and you yeah. can see how, how it escalated and got out of hand. So here's, here's a thing just to look at as we close. <clears throat> when serving spinach, remember seasoning with salt makes it easier to swallow. <laughs> and so you're looking at this guy, uh, look at the, the sign in the back, it says, Conversation diner. And uh, here we got the world. We have the gospel, truth. We have the church, the lady, and then the grace. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So what is this telling us as followers of Jesus? I think the okay, best thing. Well, that's what you say. Yeah. <laughs> Engage your brain. Before, before putting your mouth in here, okay? But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, in the back of your page, you're going to find another thing on the steamroller. Remember, we, we mentioned the steamroller? You have to know how to recognize that. And... Uh, do, do we have a steamroller going on uh, with the first uh, first video? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they hit you with a lot of questions you can't even answer one. All right. Head on collision right there. Uh -huh. So you have, you have strong, the, the steamroller is, they have strong opinions, strong personalities. They interrupt constantly. They can be sincere, but very excitable. Uh, they can overwhelm, challenge, and they want to win. Who wanted to win in the first one? They both did. Both, yes. Yeah, who didn't? Neither. 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 Yeah. What about the second one? She did. She wanted to win. She wanted to win, but he was able to do something. So the things to be alert for is to stay calm, to listen, be assertive. Now that guy in the second one, okay, she was throwing some zingers his way, but he's, he was calm. He was self-assured. He listened. He paused, he negotiated, he stayed focused, and he came up with some solutions. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, you, if you have a chance, I would keep this as a reference, but look at the uh, steamroller tactic. This is uh, lesson six that we, we had looked at, and keep that in mind when you run across a steamroller. Um, so, any questions? I think we also need to always remember that tactfulness will always win over aggressive or assertive yeah. behavior. Even if you disagree with who you're studying with, again, stay calm, be self-assured, ask questions. If you have to, say a silent prayer. Hmm. And if they say something you're not sure of, what could you say? Check on that. I'll check on that. You know what? That's a good idea. I'll check on that. Thank you for bringing that up. Let's have instrumental music. What's that? 
Let's have instrumental music. Yeah. Sure after sure. Um, <laughs> you know that's 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 uh, an interesting uh, an interesting concept. Um, why would you want to have instrumental music? Well, there's several other congregations that have it. Why can't we? Well, you know that that does present an interesting an, an, an interesting idea. But here's here's something I'd like to share with you. Um, when you were little, did your parents ever say, "If Johnny jumped off the bridge, would you follow yeah. him?" <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come to that conclusion? <laughs> yeah. Curiosity. Or the other thing is, your, your, your question about instrumental music poses kind of a, a, a heavy discussion. And that would be a good study to, to find out why the instrument is in worship and why not the instrument is in worship. Would you agree to a study like that? Sure. That's the way, that's how tactfulness but you're not being aggressive or assertive. No. You're being tactful. You're being respectful. respectful. Yes. Hey, Joe, so, just, just for everybody's uh, edification here, we do have um, the tactics book and DVD that explains in detail the steamroller thing. We did a class on it for anyone who's missed it. So if you'd like that resource that is in the library, to be checked out. You could watch the DVD. Right. Okay, and my final comment is... Yeah. Your attention, I thank you for. <laughs> <laughs>